chapter 8. And we will read verse number 4, 5, and 6. Psalms chapter 8, verses 4, 5, and number 6. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things under his feet. Verse number four, what is man? What is man that you are mindful, that you pay attention to him, the Son of Man, that you will visit with him? For you have made man a little lower than the angels, but yet you have crowned mankind with glory and honor. And you have made him, man, to have dominion, to have authority, to have control over the works of your hands. And you have put all things under man's feet. I want to minister tonight, create it to be like him. Create it to be like him. Him. Brother Riley, ask the blessing over the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Mankind is God's ultimate creation. And what I mean by that mankind is God's ultimate creation, mankind is created in the image of God. There is no other creation that has been created under the heavens that is created in the image of God except for man. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. The psalmist David recognized how wonderful his creation of his own life was, for the Bible says Psalms 139 and verse number 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. So the creation of man is God's ultimate creation. We are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. We have been created in the image of God so that we can have fellowship with him. We can have a relationship with him. We can walk with him. We can talk with him. And he also communes with us. And the Bible tells us in Psalms 8 and 5 in our scripture reading that we have been made a little lower than the angels, but yet we have been crowned with something that the angels do not have, and that is we have been crowned with glory and with honor. The glory and the honor that God has crowned us with gives us something that no other creature that God has created, he has given us glory and honor. The glory and honor that God has created us, that God has created us with, does not make us a God, and it does not make us God. Amen. Nor will we ever become God's. Amen. But we have been manifested of his love. We have become a manifestation of his love toward you and me. We have been given glory and honor. This glory and honor gives you and me power and authority as we have seen in verse number 6. You have made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands and you have put all things under his feet. Through the very act of creation, through the very act of creation, God has given you and I dominion over the works of his hands. We are to take authority over creation. We are to take authority and dominion, not only here on earth, but yet we also can have authority and dominion, amen, over the spiritual realm as well when we begin to walk under the anointing and we begin to walk on the, under the power and we begin to walk under the authority of Jesus Christ. God, through the act of his creation, has distinguished man and has qualified him for dominion over the inferior creatures. For the Bible says in Job 35 and verse number 11, Who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven. 
But man, because of sin, man, because of his broken relationship with God, has lost that place of dominion and has lost that place of power. Amen. But when we begin to walk in the ways of God and we begin to once again reunite ourselves with God and begin to have that fellowship with God, amen, we see through Scripture that that dominion is given back to us and we can begin to take power and we can begin to take dominion over the enemy of our soul. The Gospel of St. Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse number 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means hurt you. So as we begin to have that relationship with God, as we begin to restore that fellowship with God and we begin to walk as God has created us with, and amen, that we become created like him. We will take the power, we will take the authority that we have through the anointing of the Holy Ghost and overcome, amen, the power of the enemy. We will take our rightful place. We will take our place in the church. We will take our place, amen, in our neighborhoods and in our town and in our county, and we will begin to exercise that authority. We will begin to exercise the power that God has given us with when we begin to walk in fellowship and we begin to walk in harmony because the ultimate desire of God is that we are created to be like him. Amen. Not to walk after our own lusts. Not to walk after our own desires. But as Adam and Eve were created in the stage of innocence to have fellowship with him. Amen. To have control of the garden. To have all things under their hands. So we also when we are reestablished in our relationship with God through the new birth experience, we are to walk in that dominion. We are to walk walk in that power. We are to walk in that glory and honor that God has given us. Amen. Because he has given us dominion. He has given us authority. Amen. Of the, over the works of his hands and he has put all things under our feet. And that is also even the power of Satan when we live our life full of the Holy Ghost. We live our life under the anointing of God. We live our life in relationship with him. We can, come, we can claim our dominion. We can claim our power. We can claim our authority and we can claim our place. Amen. Over the powers of hell. Over the powers of darkness. Amen. And walk in liberty and victory of the Holy Ghost. And somebody say amen. But as long as we allow sin to rule and reign within our life. We are not walking as God created us to be. We are not living in the realm of power. We are not living in the realm of authority. We are not living in the realm of dominion that God wants us to be in. Amen. The power and the authority, the glory and the honor that God has crowned us with, amen, is not for our own glory. It's not for our own power. It's not for our own dominion. It's not for our own authority. Authority, but it is so that we can become like Jesus. Every day that we live, I am going to become more like Jesus. Every day that we live, I am going to mold myself. I am going to shape myself to become more like Jesus so that the glory and the honor that God has crowned us with, I can use to my advantage, amen, for my spiritual victory, for the victory of my life, for the victory of my church, amen, so that we we can overcome the powers of hell. We can overcome the powers of darkness. And we can walk in the liberty and the victory and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. The authority and the power and the glory and honor that God has given us is to become like Jesus. Amen. From the very beginning of God's plan, the, from the very beginning of God's creation, he has desired to make you like himself. But are we willing 
Here's the key. Are we willing to allow ourselves to be made into his image? Being made into his image is not a one-time occurrence. They say, well, I repented. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I'm made in the image of Jesus. No, 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 no. Every day that we live, we are on the wheel of the potter. Every day that we live, we allow ourselves to be molded, and we allow ourselves to be shaped into the image of God, that every day we live, we can say as John the Baptist, I must decrease so that he will increase. Amen. So this ought to be our heartbeat. This ought to be our passion. This ought to be our desire. Every day that I live, I want to become more like Jesus because I want to make heaven my home. I want to live and walk in the power and in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This is your destiny. This is God's destiny for your life, and this is the main purpose. What is the reason for your life? It's to become like Jesus Christ, to be molded and to be shaped into his image. And God announced this intention at creation. Genesis 1, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. There's that word again, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse number 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We have been created, amen, in the very image and in the very likeness of Almighty God. Now, just a side note, when people say and people read in Genesis 1, what does it mean when God said, let us make man in our image? Is he talking to a plurality of persons in a supposed Godhead? No, absolutely not. But as we begin to understand the wording of Scripture, we understand that all Semitic languages use the plural, amen, which Elohim, which is in reference to God here, is, amen. But it's not a plurality of persons, but yet it is the measuring or the heightening of the idea of the singular, how powerful and how anointed that God is. The precise kind of heightening has to be implied through this word, the word Elohim. Amen. In its earliest writings of Hebrew, it is always almost universally singular. Amen. Not numerically, but singular as influencing the idea of might. I said all this to say that when we speak about God saying, let us make man in our image. The Elohim that is referred to in Genesis 1 and 26 means absolutely the fullness of divine nature. It is the sum powers. It is the totality of all that God is that he has bestowed upon mankind when he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That's why we are crowned with glory and honor. That is why we have dominion and authority over things on earth and over things in the spiritual realm as well when once again we are born again and we are reunited with Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. Anybody going to say amen? Amen. You say, well, Brother Uspan, well, how do you know what you just said is absolutely true? Well, go to verse number 27. And so God created man in what? His own image. He didn't say God created man in their image, but God created man in his own image, singular. So if it was talking about a plurality of persons in verse number 26, then it would make sense that in verse number 27, it would say, so God created man in their own image. But it says he created man in his own image. image. So the Elohim represents the majestic powers of God, the fullness of his strength, the fullness of his powers. Amen. So mankind is made in the image of God. This great privilege gives us dignity over all other created beings. Amen. And so as we recognize the honor, we recognize the privilege, we recognize, amen, what God has given to us, it ought to cause us to shake ourselves that I am going to be what God wants me to be. I am going to allow myself to be created in the image of Almighty God so I can become more like Him every day that I live. Amen. How are we created in his image? Number one, we are spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings. Every one of us has a spirit and has a soul. 
as a soul, amen, and our spirit and our soul, amen, will outlast our earthly bodies. One day this earthly body, this temp, this temple, this shell, this tent will, will go back to the dust, but yet my spirit and my soul, they are going to live on through eternity. Also, we are created in the image of God is that we are intellectuals. That means we can think, we can reason, and we can solve problems. Amen. God has given us the capacity. God has given us the ability. Amen. That we can think and we can reason. We, we can begin to solve problems. We can begin to see situations. Instead of living a life of reaction, we can live a life of action that I am going to take charge. I am going to live in a, a, a role of dominion. I am going to live in a role of power. I am going to live in a role of authority over the circumstances that come my way because God has created me to become like him. God wants me to live like him. God wants me to live in victory. God wants me to live in anointing. God wants me to live in authority. So when I recognize that I am a spiritual being, but I have intellect, amen, and I can reason and I can think that I am not going to live a reactionary life. I am not going to respond to things that happen to me, but I am going to take charge. I am going to take authority. I am going to take my place as a child of God and recognize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus. We are also relational. What does that mean? We can give and we can receive love. Amen. We can give and we can receive love. Every one of us also has a moral consciousness. We can discern right from wrong if we will allow ourselves to. And because we can discern right from wrong, it makes us accountable to God. Don't ever think that you're not accountable for your actions. Don't ever think you will not be held accountable for the deeds that you have done. Amen. For whatever a man sows, the Bible says, that shall he also reap. If he sows spiritual, he's going to reap spiritual. If he, shows, if he sows carnal, he's going to reap carnal. If he sows fleshly, he's going to reap fleshly things. Amen. So let us be created in the image of God. Let us become like Jesus Christ. Let us become like the person that God wants us to be. Amen. That we will sow the spiritual things. We will sow the things of the kingdom of heaven. We will sow the good things. Amen. Because we are created in the image of God. But because of sin and because of rebellion against the creator, the image that we have been created in and the power and the glory that God has bestowed upon us has become damaged. It has become distorted and ha it has become broken. Because of sin, mankind tries to build up their own kingdoms. Because of sin, they say, look what I can do. Look what I have done. Look what I have achieved. Instead of giving him glory, instead of giving him honor, instead of giving him the praise of their life. The Bible says this about mankind found in Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 6. Who sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. What a sad testimony about mankind who was created in the image of God that man can shed innocent blood. But this is what happens when dominion, this is what happens when power and authority has been distorted and been broken. Instead of fulfilling the will of God and the plan of God, now mankind follows after their own vices, follows after their own wicked ways, follows after their own heart's desires, and instead of getting better, and instead of becoming Becoming more like God, they fall further away from God. They become less like Him. Amen. And they become a regenerate, amen, or a degenerate, I should say, amen, animal instead of, amen, walking in the praise and walking in the glory and walking in the honor that God wants them to walk in. Look what James said in James chapter 3, beginning with verse number 9. Therefore, bless we God, even the Father. And therefore we curse men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed of blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. There are people that will say with one side of their mouth, Oh, how I love Jesus. 
but on the other side of their mouth, they'll say four-letter words, five-letter words, amen, that will make a sailor to blush. This ought not to be. And when we are created in the image of God, amen, our talk and our walk is going to change because I am made to be like Jesus Christ. It is God's will. It is God's plan. It is God's desire, amen, to be made into the image of God. So my speech, the way I talk, my actions, the way that I live, they are going to exemplify what God has created me to be. And the psalmist, he said, you know, what is man that you are mindful of him, God? Because David knew what kind of per people men were. They were murderers. They were backbiters. They were liars. They were deceivers. And even David himself fell into sin, amen, with the sin of adultery and then killing, amen, Bathsheba's husband. Oh, he knew what man was, and he could not just really grasp and get a hold of the fact, why are you so mindful? Why do you pay so much attention to mankind? Why? Because he loves us. We were created in the image of God. Amen. The rest of creation was spoken into existence. Amen. But God reached down into the dust. God reached down into the clay, and he formed and he fashioned you and me after his image. Amen. That we can love, we can think, we can talk, we can walk, we can have fellowship, we can reason. Amen. We can see our way through because we were created in the image of God. So let us renew that place in God. Let us begin to walk in that image. Let us begin to live in that image. Let us be what God wants us to be so that we will walk in the glory and we will walk in the honor that Jesus Christ has originally crowned us with and that we take dominion and we take authority over the powers of hell and lift up the name of Jesus and magnify the name of Jesus and glorify the name of Jesus. So what was God going to do? He was going to become man to restore the image that we lost because of corruptible sin. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. He became flesh, amen, so that you and I could be rightfully restored to that place that he wants us to be, that we can become more like him. And the Bible tells us what happens when we are born again. John chapter 1, beginning with verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What is that power? That power is to have dominion. That power is to have authority. That power is to take that place and live in that place and walk in that place that God wants us to live in and walk in, that we don't live beneath our privilege, that we don't allow, amen, the demons of hell and depression and the things of the world to bring us down and to pull us down, amen. But we live under the joy and we live live under the anointing of the Holy Ghost because we have been created in the image of God. We have been created to become more like Him. So every day that I live, we need to lift up the name of Jesus. Every day that I live, we need to lift up the name of the Lord and thank Him because I have become more like Him. But as many as received Him to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. God is a God of second chances. Oh, yes, he created us, but now he allows us to be born again. Amen. Through our natural birth, we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. Amen. But because of the born again experience, I can repent of my sins. I can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. I can be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God living with inside of me. God has given me a second chance. God has given me a second opportunity. Amen. That once again, I can have fellowship. Once again, I can have relationship. Once again, I can have communion with God. And I can allow myself to be created and to be made into his image, to be made like him. Everybody say amen. The man Christ Jesus is the image of almighty God. Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. 
So God knew in Genesis 1.26 that not only would we be able to reason, not only would we be able to love, not only would we be able to think, not only were we spiritual beings, but yet even though that Jesus Christ was not yet born or conceived of the Virgin Mary, amen, but thousands of years later God saw through the portals of time that he would robe himself in flesh, he would become flesh, amen. And so as we are created in the image of God, we also are fleshly beings, amen. We are fleshly beings just as God was so he can relate to us. He knows what we're facing. He knows what we're going through. Amen. He knows the heartbreaks. He knows the tears because he was there himself. We have a God that can relate to us because he loves us. What is man that thou art mindful of him, O God? What is man that you care about him, O God? What is man and the son of man that you would visit with him, that you would call out of the Gentiles a people for his name, according to Acts chapter 15 and verse number 14? What is it about him that you would crown him with glory and honor? What is it about him that you would give him a second opportunity to take dominion and authority over the works of your hands? and over all your creation after they first made a mess of it all way back in the Garden of Eden. I just got to think that my God says, I love man just because. I love man just because. Because I created them in my image. I made them to be like me, and I want to help them. I want to reach out to them. I want to touch them. I want to renew them. I want to restore them so that they can become like me once again. But he say, Amen. Oh, can you see the love of God? Can you see the grace of God? Because God became flesh through the body of Jesus Christ. He has set in motion a plan of redemption that you and I can be restored into, and that is to be the image that God desires us, us to be. Amen. We read Colossians 1.15. Let's go back a few verses and start at verse number 12. Amen. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us, amen, meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. Here it is. I can be a partaker of the inheritance who has delivered us. Amen. Who has delivered us. What is that? That's dominion. That's authority. That's power from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now I have that redemption. Now I have that washing. And one moment I was an element of the world, but in the next moment I was translated into the kingdom. Amen. I was born again. He has filled me. Amen. With the Holy Ghost. And one day soon the trumpet is going to sound and this corrupt is going to put in incorruption, and this mortal is going to become is going to put on immortality, and there forever and ever, I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to praise Him around the throne of the Lamb of God. And if you want to make heaven your home, if you want to be like that, you've got to be created in His image. You've got to become like Him. We cannot walk in the ways that we once walked in. We cannot live in the ways that we once lived in. People often use the phrase, like father, like son, referring to a family resemblance. So I want to ask you a question today. Do you bear the image of Jesus Christ to this world? Do you bear the image of Jesus Christ to this world? And as, as Ephesians 4.24 says, that we have put on the new man that we put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The new man that you see me, amen, we are created in righteousness and true holiness. We have left the world of sin. We have broken the chains of sin. And now we walk in the liberty and the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. What, what are you? Who are you tonight? What are you and who are you tonight? Are you a child of God? Are you his image? Are you putting on the new man? There are some people that do not want to follow in the footsteps of their parents because their parents weren't all that good. Drug addicts. 
adulterers, fornicators, thieves, liars. And they say, I got to have a better life. So you can't say like father, like son, or like daughter, like mother in that situation. But when you are created in the image of God through the new birth experience, you can say, yeah, I'm like my heavenly father. Because he has bestowed upon me love. He has, besto- he has bestowed upon me mercy. He has forgiven me of my sins. Amen. And I have put on the new man. And as I put on the new man, I am created to live in what? Righteousness and true holiness. No longer following the dictates of flesh. No longer walking after the lusts of the flesh. But to be restored to the image of Jesus Christ. We take on a new way of life that comes from God. To be restored to the image of Jesus Christ, a God-fashioned life, a life that is renewed from the inside, working itself on the outside into our conduct. Amen. God is reproducing his character with inside of us. Let me ask you a question today, and only you can be honest The life that you have lived Monday, Tuesday, and today, has it reflected Jesus Christ? When you were about doing whatever you do during the day, schoolwork, work, cleaning house, going to Walmart, whatever, does does it reflect Jesus Christ? This is what Jesus Christ has created us to be, that we reflect him, that we magnify him, that we lift him up. Amen. Because we are to put on the new man. We are to put on a new man. Amen. And so as we are born again, God should be working within us to reproduce his character inside of us. For the Bible says in Romans 13, 14, that we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and we make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust there. We say to our desires, we say to our flesh, no. I'm a child of God. When the devil comes to tempt us and the devil comes to draw on us and pull on us, we say, no, I'm a child of God. I belong to Jesus. I reflect him because I have been created to be made like him. That is my purpose of life. That is God's goal for my life so that I can become more like him. As we put on the new man, we recognize that we become like him because his power gives us victory and authority. 1 John 4 and 4, the Bible says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. This is part of the dominion. This is part of the authority that God has given to us that we live victoriously in Jesus Christ. We live victoriously in his love. We live victoriously in his power. We live victoriously in his anointing, that we overcome the things of the world because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Many religions, New Age philosophies, promote the lie that you are divine and you can become like or you can become God's. Amen. And there is even some circles in Christianity that says you can become as God. You can become gods. But this desire to become a god shows up every time we try to control our circumstance. We try to control our future. We can try to control our lives around us. We see this way back in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 5. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But yet we see the mess that mankind has made themselves. We see the mess that we have made our world when we thought we can become gods. Because in actuality, we cannot have ultimate control over our circumstances. Because our circumstances, amen, is only going to be what we want it to be. Our future is only going to be what we want it to be. But we recognize that when we are created in the image of God, we turn our circumstances over to Him. We cast all our care upon Him because He cares for us, amen. Our future future becomes his, that we seek the will of God. We live after the will of God. We desire the will of God for our life. God's ultimate goal, listen to me, God's ultimate goal is not for you to live a life of comfort. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with living a comfortable life. Amen. But God's ultimate goal for your life is not to be one of comfort, but it is to take on his attitudes. It's to take on his values. It's to take on his characters. He wants you and me to become godly. Not a god, but to become godly. So we, can we say that we are living a godly life? Can we say I am living a life that God is pleased with? He wants you to grow up spiritually. We talked about this. We preached about this Sunday, about it's time to grow up and become like him. Becoming like Jesus Christ does not mean you lose your personality. It does not mean you become a mindless clone because God has created you with uniqueness. But we surrender our will, we surrender our purpose, we surrender our plan to him so that he can take our abilities, he can take our uniqueness, amen. He takes the transformation of our character that we become more like him, that we walk and we talk after him, we have fellowship with him and we love him so that we can have a creative and productive life. If you were to ask someone in the world what is a productive life, they would say, well, to make as much money as you can, to live in the finest home that you can, to drive the finest car that you can. Then you have, then you have had a productive life. But is that really a productive life? Because when it's all said and done and you die, everything that you have achieved and everything that you have gained is left behind to someone else. Someone else is going to take a family member or the state. But I think a productive life is to know that, number one, I've touched others. I've helped others. I made someone else's life better because I showed them the way of Jesus Christ. And I also believe the ultimate of a productive life is that I have lived my life to such a place that when I leave this world, I know I'm going to a better place, and that's heaven. Amen. You know, it's sad, and I don't want to make a mockery of people in their times of sadness, but it's sad that whenever someone dies, they always say without a doubt, well, they're in heaven right now, no matter what kind of person. Very, very rarely do you say, well, they didn't make it. Brother Oscar told me a story not too long ago. What Was it a friend of yours? Amen. One of his friends died, and, and well, it was his wife, wasn't it? Amen. And so where did she go? Oh, I didn't go up there. went down there. You know, that, that's a rarity. At least they were honest. But everybody, well, they passed away. They're going to heaven. Praise God. Well, how do you know? Have they lived a productive life? Were they born again? Was their character becoming more like Jesus Christ? So a... a a life, amen, that has become productive is touching others, but also it is transforming your life that you are created like him so that when he comes, you will rise to meet him. Listen to what the Bible says in Second Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse number 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath uh, called us to glory and virtue. Whereby, verse number four, we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that we might be partakers of the divine nature. What is that divine nature? That is Jesus. That God has given you and me precious and great promises that I can partake of his glory. I can partake of his nature. I can take partake of his honor that I escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. What is the corruption that is in the world through lust? Basically sin. That is, I have become a partaker of his divine nature. I am escaping the corruption. I am escaping the sin of this world, the bondage of sin, the chains of sin. And beside this, giving to all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and the virtue, knowledge, and the knowledge temperance, and the temperance patience, and the patience godliness, and the godliness brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness charity or love. You say, well, what do these things mean? That would be a good Bible study for you to explore the rest of this week. Find out what each one of these attributes are. Find out if they're a part of your life. For the Bible says if these things, diligence, faith, 
virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. If these things be in you, and what? Abound. Make sure that's what it says. Abound. Everybody say abound. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he, verse number 9, that says that lacketh these things. What things? Diligence, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. If you lack these things, then the Bible says you're blind. And you cannot see afar off, and you have forgotten that you are part. You wonder why people keep repeating the same mistakes and keep doing the same dumb things? Because they're lacking these things in their life. They are not walking in the created image that God wants them to walk in. They are not becoming more like Jesus Christ. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence, pay attention, to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. Listen to what the promise of the Word of God says. If we do these things that Peter has mentioned and has, has listed, that these precious promises that God has given to us, we will never fall. What does that mean? You'll never backslide. You'll never lose out with God. You will never be lost. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our existence, our existence and our purpose is for God's purposes and God's plan, not ours. Not ours. It is God's desire and it is God's plan that we walk through the entrance of the everlasting kingdom into heaven. As we live here on this earth, let us also live in the kingdom realm that I am giving myself to him because I have been created in the image of Jesus Christ, that I am walking and I am living and I am being the person that God wants me to be. And so this is why it gives us, God gives us our time. This is why God gives us chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity to build and strengthen our character for heaven and also to help others do the same. What is man that you're mindful of him, Lord? He cusses you. He backbites you. He criticizes you. He says you're not for real. And the son of man that you would even visit with him, that you would even have fellowship with him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, but you have crowned him with glory and honor. And you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands, and that you have put all things under his feet. Because we have been created to become like him. We have become created to live in fellowship and harmony with him, to be filled with his spirit, to submit ourselves, amen, to the will and to the plan of God so God can receive glory, God can receive honor in our life. So as you look at your life, are you walking after his likeness? Are you living after his likeness? Are you surrendering yourself to him to become more like him? Or are you following your own goals? Are you following your own desires? Are you following your own path? Saying, I, I've got it all in control. Well, there will come a time and there will come a point that you will recognize that you don't have it all in control, that you need Jesus. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And Jesus has created you and me to become like him. So God created man in his own image. Not just to think, not just to talk, not just to love, not just to reason or ration. Not just being a spiritual being or a fleshly being. But we have become created in his image to become like him to do the work that God would have us to do, to fulfill his mission, to fulfill his calling, to fulfill his purpose. Not to live our life according to our desires and according to our lives. Once again, that does not mean we cannot enjoy life. But we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things 
shall be added unto us. Everybody say amen. Let's clap our hands and let's praise the Lord.